Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Marquita from At Home with Kita, and here I share tips on how to plan a balanced life. So if you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing. So today's video is the first video in my new series here on YouTube called Planner University. I'm really excited to share with you how to plan. If you're new to the planner community and you're a little bit overwhelmed and you need to figure this all out, this is the series for you. So I'm gonna take you through how to choose a planner all the way to how to find planner peace. So first up is how to choose the right planner for you. So let's go ahead and kick this series off. If you wanna see how to choose the right planner for you, make sure to keep watching. So I firmly believe that having a planner is such a great tool. It helps you be productive, figure out what are the things that you want to accomplish in life. And it is a necessity for me. So some of you, again, are new here to the planner community and you just don't know where to start. You are overwhelmed and you're almost ready to give up. So that's why I've developed this series that's going to have about 20 or so videos that's going to walk you through the entire process of picking out the right planner for you all the way to finding planner peace which is what we all want to achieve. And as helpful as they are, if we're honest, there is so much out there on the market that it can get confusing. And so I'm going to share with you some tips, some things to look for in regards to how to choose a planner that's going to fit your personality. Because you have a planner that's going to work for you and that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for the next person. And there's nothing worse than choosing out a planner that you think is going to work for you and it ends up sitting on the shelf collecting dust. And some of the planners out there, y'all, are not cheap. So in this series, I'm going to share with you how to narrow down those choices to make it easier for you. So let's go ahead and get started. There's going to be a series of tips I'm going to share with you. I'm going to show you some things. We're going to work through this process together. So y'all know how I roll. I'm not just going to talk you through the process. I'm going to show you everything. So that way you can make a comparison and you can just see everything all out in front of you and you can make an informed decision. So let's go ahead and head over to the overhead view. So choosing the right planner comes down to a really simple and basic formula, and that is function plus size plus binding. So it's very easy when you think about it in those terms. So the first thing that we're going to touch on today is function because that is the first thing that you need to think about because in many ways it's going to determine the next steps in the formula and it's hard to know how to choose a planner when you don't know what you're going to use it for so think about things like where you're going to be using it and how often you're going to need to access it so in my opinion there are two different types of planners there's one for reference and one for action so i consider this planner which is my catch-all planner an action planner so basically what that means is that there's things in here that you're going to need to, to check off day to day and make sure that you are doing on a daily basis to keep on task now reference planners are things like this planner so this is my meal planner and so within this planner I have meal options and um, all types of things pertaining to or related to meal planning that I only need to reference I really don't need to be checking things off in here or, or doing really anything within this planner besides looking at it to see what I'm having for dinner so just think of it like that reference planner or action planner and you can have both in your lineup um, like I do I have both I have several different planners but just take note of what planners that you're going to actually be working out of on a day-to-day -day basis and what planners you're actually just going to be looking at from time to time and so this planner is going to get used every day and this is just on a every now and then basis Next thing to think about is where you're gonna use the planner. If it's a reference one, chances are that you're probably gonna have it stay home. And if it's a work reference planner, it'll stay at work. But if it's an action planner, you'll need to decide if it's something that you're gonna need when you're out and about. Because if you're taking it with you and you're not just leaving it at the house, you're gonna want something smaller, maybe more portable. You'll definitely wanna consider the size of the planner, which is gonna play a big factor in the next part of this process, which we're gonna talk about now, which is the size. And and when you're thinking about ways that you would like to use your planner, think about things that you want to track. Do you want to track productivity, goals? Do you need a blog planner, a social media planner, financial planner, self-care, meal planner? 
even a home management planner. So those are all things that you'll need to consider in terms of choosing the right type of planner for you. There's also something called Franken planning, which we will touch on in another video. And I'll share with you what exactly that means, because if you do have multiple planners that you want to use, but you don't want to carry around 10 planners, then that is an option for you as well. So those are things that you'll need to consider on your own. Only you know what you're going to use this planner for, but that is the first thing that you need to determine. What are you going to use the planner for? Will it only be for one specific thing or do you want to plan many different things in it? So when it's time to choose your perfect planner, this is something you'll need to consider first. So this is the area that I find the hardest to make a decision on, and you probably do as well. Too small and it can be hard to find the right setup for what you need. Too big and your planner could be really cumbersome and hard to use. But for the most part, this is your own personal preference. No one else can choose this but you. But there's a few things that you can keep in mind when it comes to choosing the right size for you. So let's jump into some sizes. I'm going to show you some comparisons using these cheat sheets that we use in Fancy Plants Co. that helps us to know the size and dimensions of each insert size. And so I will show them to you using these because I think that this is going to be the easiest way for you to be able to get a visual. And then I also have some planners nearby that I'm going to bring out and share with you guys as well so you can see it in, in its actual form. So we'll start from biggest to smallest. I won't show you using these letter size because letter size is the size of a standard size US piece of paper. And so I have a planner here that I can show that to you and we don't need that in terms of this form because we already know the dimensions of that by heart. Everybody does. But I want to show you how the letter size planner would look because this is the biggest of all the planners. So this is letter size. Again, letter size is the size of a standard size USP piece of paper, which is an eight and a half by 11. And so this is an old setup that I had in the past. I love letter size because it gives you a ton of space to write on. So that is something that you'll want to consider as well. How much space do you need? We're talking about size here. So that is a part of the decision making that you'll have to do on your end. Do you have big handwriting? Do you have small handwriting? You have to think about that when it comes to choosing the right size. Remember, you're also going to need to think about what you're using that planner for reference or action larger might be better for an action planner and also portability as you can see this thing is big it's not going to be easy to transport around from place to place so you may want to consider a smaller size how many pages do you need to keep in it smaller planners might require more pages to keep all the information you need larger ones require less pages and then also when it comes to page number and how much you'll need to add in there if you have a small planner you may need larger discs so that's something else to consider so I'm just throwing in a couple of things that may fit into that category of size and other factors that you'll have to think about when determining the right size for you also do you have a lot of stuff going on and you know that you're gonna need to write down a lot of things or do you just want a planner where you can quickly jot down notes ideas um, if so a smaller planner may be the ideal choice for you so there's a lot of things to consider when choosing the right size again this is the larger of the sizes it's letter size I feel like with letter size you have a ton of space you have a lot of room to be able to write what you need to write I'm not completely sure the dimension of these boxes here but you can write a whole lot of things there and then this is just one layout we are going to talk about layout in a different video because there's so many layouts and I don't want to make this video super long we're just talking about some key things that you can use as a guide to be able to determine your planner personality and which planner is going to work for you so this is the vertical layout so as you can see there is so much space here so I want to give you a comparison to classic size just so you can see scale and that's the next size that we're going to talk about and I will give you a comparison of scale for the next planner that we're talking about so we're talking about letter size I'll do classic size and when it comes to the next size underneath classic size I will share with you a5 and so on and so forth just so you can get an idea from one planner to the next how the size differs so this is classic size and I'll close this up so you can see in comparison to letter size so as you can see it's a lot smaller than letter size and in my opinion classic is one of the best sizes it is one of the more popular sizes and it is 7 by 9.2 inches and it is just a great size even if you have bigger handwriting so let me show you we'll move letter out the way so remember we talked about letter first this is classic size and then this is how the actual classic size planner looks so as you can see 
It is considerably smaller than that one, but still a great size option for you. And so this is also an old setup that I had before. And I did love classic size because I just felt like you had so much space to work with, but it wasn't as clunky and cumbersome as the letter or big size. And so you still had a ton of space because I do feel like I have probably medium sized handwriting, I guess. I don't have overly large handwriting, although I can from time to time. But for the most part, I can fit it wherever I need to fit it. I can fit it in personal size. I can fit it in classic big size. I can adapt to whatever that planner is. But if you just know that you don't wanna have to adapt, you just wanna use what you got and you wanna write how you write, then you'll wanna consider a big size planner or a classic size planner. All right, so let's move on to the next size in this process. And I'm also gonna share with you some half page sizes as well, but we'll talk about that after I show you all of the sizes. And I'm gonna go through pretty much every single size that I can think of. So I'm not just only gonna show you the popular sizes, I'm gonna show you all of the sizes. So that way you can get a real sense of what you need. So this is the next size, which is a five size. So as you can see, the size is a lot, or well, I won't say a lot different from classic size, but it is considerably smaller than letter size. So that is a five size compared to classic size. It is 5.8 by 8.3, and it is a great size option also for larger handwriting people, but I really would tend to lean to classic and big if you know that you just have overly large handwriting. So this is an A5 planner, and as you can see, this cover here, and we'll do a whole nother video on covers. I don't wanna confuse you. I want this video to be concise, to the point, very structured and in its message. And this is really just the beginning part of the process and things to consider. So I don't wanna confuse you too much with covers. That's a whole nother video. And so as you can see, with when it comes to covers, typically it's gonna be a little bit larger than the insert. And so this is a cover from Notique. And this also, I'm showing you through all of my old setups. But the paper size, as you can see, it gives you a little bit of extra room to be able to move around. And that is what you would see typically standard throughout the whole industry. But the paper size is 5.8 by 8.3. And it does, again, still give you a lot of space to work with in terms of writing, but it's gonna be just a little bit smaller. Um, and so this is a great size of, for those of you who do have larger handwriting, or you have smaller handwriting, it could work for either scenario. Not overly large handwriting, otherwise you're gonna be taking up the whole box. And there's several, again, several different layouts that will help you if you have a certain type of handwriting style over another. And again, we'll talk about that in a future video. But this is the next size up, and this is A5 size. A5 size is very similar to half letter size, which is what we're gonna talk about next. Half letter size is another super, super popular size. And that happens to be the size that I use for my catch-all planner. And this is how it compares to A5 size. And again, this is a cover. So of course the cover is gonna be a lot larger than the inserts. But when it comes to the inserts, as you can see, half letter and A5 are very similar. So the difference between half letter and A5, A5 is half of a sheet of paper, international size. Half letter is a half a sheet of paper for US size paper, which we talked about before. This is letter size. It's half of a letter size sheet of paper. And so it's very similar to A5. A5 is a little bit wider, a little bit more narrow. Half letter is a little bit more narrow and a little bit taller. So that is the only difference between A5 and half letter. Half letter inserts will fit inside of an A5 cover and inside and within Fancy Plans Co, we offer the ability to be able to punch half letter as hole punch or disc punch, but it is typically punched disc punch. Same thing for A5. And so this right here is just a matter of preference because as you see, they're so similar to each other that it's, it's really just a matter of personal preference. And there's a lot of places now that offer inserts for both half letter and A5, which is something we're gonna touch on just briefly in this video because there are full planner inserts and there are also planners that you can purchase that already have the inserts inside of them. So this is A5 and this is half letter. And I will show you a half letter planner as well. So again, as you can see, half letter is a little bit taller, just slightly, and A5 is a little bit wider. So I wanted to show you the width as well. I don't know if you'll be able to tell from here, but it's just a little bit wider. So as you can see, width there, and then height here. 
So you see how so similar this is that it, it could be a little bit tricky and a little bit confusing. <laughs> and so you're like, what is A5? What is half letter? What is the difference? It looks so similar. There is no difference. The only difference, well, there is a difference. Size is the difference, but it's so minute that it's just a matter of what you want, especially if you're considering a cover and you want a certain cover that only has A5 um, ability, then you know that's a, a factor as well. And then also when it comes to A5, a lot of times A5 is hole punched. Half letter, most of the time is disc punched. So that's another thing to consider. But we're gonna talk about that when we get to the binding part of this video. So differences between half letter and A5 is the size, of course. One is international, half a sheet of that paper. One is US, half a sheet of that paper. And then also A5 tends to have ring punch and half letter tends to have disc punch. So that is really it. So let me show you how a half letter planner looks because that is what I happen to use for my catch-all planner. So when it comes to the covers, it's very similar, but as you can see, half letter is a little taller, A5 is a little bit wider, even in the cover. But a lot of times these covers are interchangeable, meaning that if I put a A5 planner in here, it should pretty much work. And if I put a half letter planner in here, it should pretty much work. But again, one is ring bound, one is disc bound. So you'll need to make sure that the options that you choose when checking out either on our site or whoever site is correct, okay? So I hope that that didn't confuse you. I tried to keep it as simple as possible because I believe that half letter and A5 is probably the most confusing thing to people. So as you can see, disc punch, hole punch. All right, and but everything else pretty much looks the same. So this is half letter. As you can see, the cover is a little bit bigger, but the inserts are the same size as this. All right, and it does also covers, most covers will give you just a little bit of extra space off to the side, so that way you can have a little more wiggle room when it comes to how much you wanna stuff inside of your planner. But that is it for A5 and half letter. Very similar to each other, and very popular, and probably the most confusing thing is which one do you choose? So I think now you understand what the difference is, okay? All right, next size, and I don't have a planner to share with you on this size. And to be honest with you guys, this is not a super popular size. It is B6 size, which is five by seven. And I don't really find that many shops carry inserts for these. This size is very comparable to mini size, mini happy planner size, which is the next planner that we're gonna talk about. It is very similar to this size. Happy planner mini is 4.5 by seven and B6 size is five by seven. So it is super duper close to the size of mini. So that's why I'm thinking that this isn't as popular because people tend to just go for a mini HP or a mini size planner. And so B6 is an option for you if you want just a slightly bigger planner then a mini size planner. Uh, you want a little bit more space, but you still want that portability. You wanna be able to stuff it in your purse really quickly to carry it with you on the go. You can do that. And I believe also there may be some bound planners that may be B6 size. I'm not really familiar with those. We do offer B6 size inserts in our shop and they are typically hole punched. So that also is something to consider. And just a quick note, I will try to share with you guys which planners are typically disc punched and which ones are typically hole punched. I did discuss that with you with half letter and A5. With classic size, those are typically disc punched. And with letter size, those are typically disc punched unless you are doing a three ring binder. Letter size could be hole punched with three rings. So B6 is typically hole punched. Mini is typically disc punched. So that's really, besides size, the only difference between them because they are so similar in size. So if I compare them here, as you can see, from height, they are pretty much the same. But when it comes to the width of them, B6 is a little bit wider, as you can see. This line here, is the middle line so this just so you know is two pages this is how we print in our shop we print certain inserts two to one page and certain inserts one to one page so we don't waste paper so really you're really only considering one half of this in terms of one page so if we look at it like this this would be one page this would be one page and this is where you could kind of tell the size difference this mark right here in the middle so it's just slightly smaller the mini size, but it's very similar to B6, and mini is definitely more popular 
than B6 size, but it is an option for you. And I wanted to share the size with you. I'm trying to go in size order and I should be covering everything, but if I'm missing something, make sure to comment below and let me know. All right, so let me show you a mini size compared to half layer, which is what we just talked about. So this is mini size. Remember, we're only considering one half of it. So just pretend this is folded. This is the size difference between mini and half letter. So if we look at an actual page, this is the size of a page. I'm gonna line it up here so you can see from top to bottom. And I hope you can get a, a good reference uh, point for this. But uh, it's just a little bit taller, half letter, and a little bit wider as well. So mini is a good bit size smaller than half letter, but I definitely wanted to compare you through these sizes so that way you can see from one size to the next and again we're trying to make the best decision and choose the best planner that's going to work for us so this is my mini planner this is what i use for business and social media and it is jam-packed with a lot of different things so i did have to add the wider discs there but again that's something that we're considering how much stuff are you trying to add to that planner because that's going to determine whether or not you want to choose this mini size because as you can see which i'm okay with it but it's, it's a lot here. And if I had a larger planner, I would have more space to write on. It would just be more room to be able to add a little different accents and things like that. So it wouldn't be as thick as this planner is. And so this is mini and this is, I want to show you a blank page because I feel like it's, it's sometimes difficult to see when you have a lot going on, but that is the size of mini. And of course, again, with all covers, you're going to have a little bit of extra room there. I do have a notique cover that um, I can show you as well, because this is a Foxy Fix cover, which I believe they went out of business. And so it's a little bit tighter in terms of the side. You don't have as much space to work with, um, but this still is a great option. If you have one, just go ahead and stuff your planner in. It's called the Perfect Fit Cover covers and I'm so sad that they went out of business it really bummed me out I tried to contact the owner and haven't heard back from them and so I'm assuming maybe they're regrouping or they may have actually gone out of business I'm, I'm hoping they didn't so I'll let you guys know if I hear anything so this is an OT cover so as you can see it's considerably you know bigger than the foxy fixed cover from top to bottom it's pretty similar but from the side view right there, you see there's a lot of extra space here with the Notique cover. And this is probably gonna be a more standard cover in terms of mini size, because this is very tight fitting, but I, I really do love it because it's it makes it a little more smaller and less wonky as well. But this is what you'll probably see when it comes to choosing a mini cover, and again, don't get confused by that. We'll have a whole dedicated video on covers. But this is the mini. And I love the mini. And a lot of people choose the mini if you are trying to be very portable. This is very portable, as you can see, because of the size. But it still gives you a lot of room to work with. And that's why I chose it for business and social media. Because I feel like my catch-all is like my main home life planner. Business is just a small percentage of what I do. I mean, it is a, 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 certainly an important part of what I do. But my home and family is the most important thing to me. And so I thought that that deserved a bigger planner and so it was okay choosing the smaller planner again my handwriting can adapt to this planner and if you have overly large handwriting I don't really recommend getting a mini happy planner or a mini planner in any form because it is going to be too small for you you are not going to be able to fit all of your things on a calendar so if you can see my handwriting I can go either way but it's very tight as you can see the boxes in the layout let me show you are a little bit a little bit tight a little bit tight okay so it's going to be a little bit harder for you to be able to write in all of those things that you want to write in so consider that and um, decide whether or not you're you're going to be able to fit all the things in that size planner and when we talk about franken planning that's basically having multiple sections and different types of planners within one planner you're going to want to choose your size correctly up front because you're not going to want to create a whole planner franken plan it just to realize that it's the wrong size for you so that is next up mini i love mini it is such a cute size and a great size to be able to just take on the go with you so mini compared to half letter just to show you again no teak cover and no teak cover as opposed to showing you that foxy fix on top of this because this is a true idea of the size comparison it is very different mini is just a little bit shorter than half letter so that is next up mini size i love mini so right now in my collection i have ton of planners in my collection but when it comes to the sizes that i use i use mini and i use half letter all right, so next up, we are going to talk about personal wide. Now, 
there is a personal size and there's a personal wide size. There's also an A5 wide size, which I didn't talk to you about because we don't offer that in our shop, but there is an A5 wide size. It's really not as popular. A5 is the size that's popular. Wide is just a little bit wider than A5. So just to I'll let you guys know that as well. So this is personal wide. Personal wide is 9.5 by 6.75 and this is personal size. So I wanted to show you both of these because I just feel like they both go hand in hand because they're both personal size. One is just wide and one isn't wide. So this is personal size, which is 7.7 .7 by 6.7, .7, and this is personal wide size. And so let me show you how a personal size looks because I do not have a personal wide size planner. So this is personal size. This is a great, great size for a purse planner or on the go planner. If you just need a uh, if you just need a planner to just throw in your bag, you're not really thinking about you know, using it on a day-to-day -day basis. You just wanna have something in your purse to write in just in case you need to. There are people who use this as their full planner, um, but this planner is very tight. You thought mini was tight? This planner is super tight. I mean, it's not a lot of space to write in. So this could be a great reference planner because remember we talked about reference planners and planners that you actually use on a day-to-day -day basis which are more functional and are action planners. So this planner would be a great planner for a reference planner. So as you can see, personal size inserts. So this is the size. So there you have it. And then personal wide, just to show you how different it is. Personal wide is the same top to bottom. So top to bottom, it's the same, but it's wider. So as you can see, if we look at the line here in the middle, personal wide has about an inch more over personal size. So I am glad I had personal size on hand, but I do not have personal wide on hand. And to be honest with you guys, personal wide isn't as popular of a size also. And I can say that because we sell inserts in our shop and I have a sense of what sells. And personal size is also not a super popular size as well. I mean, it is popular in terms of most, not most, but a lot of people do have a personal size planner. But in terms of using it on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't believe a lot of people use personal size on a day-to-day -day basis. It, because again, it's such a cute portable planner. It's easy to just throw in your bag. It's great to use as a wallet. But otherwise, in terms of actual planning day to day, this just isn't that planner, at least in my opinion. Those of you out there who do use this for planner, um, for planning every day, my hat is off to you because this is just a, a small planner and it's tight for those of us who want to be able to track everything. And so this is personal size and this is personal wide size. So let me give you a comparison to mini. So this is mini size and personal wide and mini are very similar, just like B6s. So as you can see from top to bottom here, there's just a little bit of space there. And then width wise, mini is a little bit wider, just a little bit. And then in terms of personal size, mini has got a lot on it. And in terms of width, it's got a lot on it as well. All right, so that is a quick comparison of personal, personal wide in comparison to mini. And then this is personal wide and personal size. So those are the next sizes. All right, and now we're going to get to A6 size. A6 size is also not a super popular size, and I do not have a planner that I can show you that is A6 size, because I just never got into that A6 life. So A6 compared to personal size, I won't share with you a comparison against the personal wide size because it's pretty much the same as personal, it's just a little bit wider. So this is personal size, this is A6 size. So as you can see, if we look at the line in the middle, this is the little extra space you have width wise on A6 size. And then when it comes to that, you see the length is about an inch more than A6 size. So A6 size is 4.1 by 5.8. As you can see, we have the dimensions written on everything, so you can always just look down and reference that. And so it's considerably smaller than a personal size, but it's still a cute size. Again, this is the same in terms of my thoughts on personal size. It's great for an on-the-go purse planner. You're not gonna be able to write your whole life in this planner, it's just too small. So this will probably be more so of a reference planner, but you could use it to plan some things out as well. Um, but in my opinion, it, it is tight space-wise, and um, but it's a good option for you if you're looking for a great reference planner, a good purse planner. All right, last up, 
in terms of full planners is the pocket size planner. So pocket size is 3.2 by 4.7. I had to raise that because I had the wrong size on there, so I don't look at that. Pocket size is a pretty popular size, but again, purse planner vibes. This isn't gonna be a planner at all that you're gonna be able to write your whole life in. Remember, you're only looking at half the page and all of the layouts that I showed you on these cards. The reason why we have the whole page is because we print it like that. We print it two per page and we need to know the whole size of the whole page in terms of making our cuts so just only look at half of that size so this is how pocket size would be that's how small it is you guys so as you can see there's not much you're gonna be able to do with the pocket size planner and so it's it's a great reference planner again a good planner to just toss in your purse on those days that you'll need to be able to have something on the go and you need to be able to write something in you can fit a pen in it just to show you for reference this would be how it would be. This is a standard size pen. If you have a cover, this will still fit a pen. So no worries. This is the smaller of the planner sizes with the exception of micro, which I'm gonna show you next. This is typically hole punched. And I'm sorry, let's backtrack. A6 is typically hole punched. Personal size is typically hole punched. Personal wide side is typically hole punched and mini size is typically disc punched. I'm so sorry, I meant to talk to you about that as we were going along. So there's a combination of hole punch and disc punch when it comes to these. Some places do offer the ability to have some things disc punched that shouldn't technically be disc punched and we don't do that. We used to, but it throws off the punching and it's just too much, it's too much. If you want these certain types of planners, it's best to just have them punched according to the way that they should be punched. So. Again, pocket size is typically hole punched and you're typically gonna buy a ring planner. Anything that's hole punched, you're gonna buy a ring planner for it. So that is the smaller of the ring planners. And so the smallest disc punch planner is called micro. So this is a micro planner. <laughs> it's so tiny and cute, right? But you can't do much with it, okay? So this is the pocket size. As you can see, pocket was already tight and small but micro is even smaller. So micro is typically disc punched for disc punched. And again, pocket size is typically hole punched. So I feel like there is a size for those disc users that is comparison to the size for hole punch users in every level. And so there's something for everybody in this planner world, you guys. You really can't say that you couldn't find what you were looking for. There's something for everybody. Okay, so this is pocket size. So I'll show you really quickly pocket compared to personal size because I don't have the pocket size cover. So it's a lot smaller, it's a little baby planner. This is great to just toss in your purse and use it for various different things. I'll do a video on my channel too at some point, it probably won't be in this series, on different ways you can use the smaller planners like the micro, or I may already have one because I do see I have some photos in here. So maybe I do have a video on my channel. So I'll try to remember to link it, but I'll do another video just to share with you guys because this planner I think is very difficult to figure out what to do with it. And so I'll do a video sometime in the future and I'll share with you guys some ways that you can use this micro planner. So this is the smallest planner on the market that I've seen, correct me if I'm wrong. And this is just a great reference planner, memory planner, planner to throw in your bag, just to have a notebook to be able to take some notes on the go. You're not gonna be able to plan your whole life in this planner, there's just no way. All right, so that is it. So now we're gonna talk about some half page sizes. Some of these plant, some of these are actual planner sizes that you can purchase a planner for, just like the ones I just mentioned to you. And one of these is just a half page size that is available for our shop um, for half letter and for A5 size. So it's not a planner that you can buy on the market. Um, it's just kind of like a custom size. But half pages are just little half pages of paper that can fit in your planner. Let me grab one of these over here so I can show you that. And you can plan some different things if you just want a half sheet. The Happy Planner has a half sheet for Skinny Classic and Skinny Mini. So you can buy full planners in this size, or you can buy the half pages that will come that will go great with your other size planner. So for instance, because I think I may just have confused you. Classic size, right, is a full planner that we talked about earlier. Skinny classic is half of a classic size planner, okay? So if you want to buy your classic size planner, but you want to be able to use some half sheets within that planner, this is what you'd want to do. So as you can see, classic, skinny classic. So you'd have, let me show you, 
because I do use that with half letter, you'd have your full page inserts. As you can see, my calendar insert is a full half letter size. And then I have a half sheet, so that way I can add some depth, some variation. I can see little things on the half page. I can see my spread and back of that on the full page. You also can add, not to confuse you, other sizes within your planner. So just because you have a half letter planner doesn't mean you can't add many size inserts or personal size inserts. You can totally do that. You just have to make sure that the, the binding is correct. So half letters. Some you can buy planners for because this is an actual skinny classic planner. It's from Notique, it's called Slim. So if you're confused as to which one to choose, you would choose the Slim. And so this is the size inserts that are inside of here. And this is called Skinny Classic, okay? So you can use it as a half sheet or you can use it as a full planner like I have it here. All right, so that is Skinny Classic. Okay, Skinny Mini is the same thing. <laughs> So this is mini size. Again, we talked about mini size. And then this is skinny mini, okay? So skinny mini is half of a page of the mini size planner. And so you can buy your mini planner and then you can have some half pages sprinkled throughout if you choose to. Or you can buy a skinny mini planner and use that with no half sheets. You're not gonna be able to fit mini into skinny mini. You're not gonna be able to fit classic into skinny classic. You get what I mean? It's only a half page. And so this is how a half page looks. All right, so this is skinny mini, this is mini. All right, so you kind of get the idea of how you would use these. You could use this as a whole dedicated planner just like I showed you with skinny classic, or you could layer it like this or you could just use the mini. It's completely up to you, but I wanna show you all the size options available to you. So that is skinny mini and that is mini. All right, so last up in terms of half pages, this is not offered in a full planner. This is just a custom size that we have. It is A5 and half letter half sheet. So again, if you love that layered stacked look, you wanna be able to add just a half page to your planner. This is just the custom size that we offer. So this is A5 and half letter. This half page is interchangeable for both. So it, it, it is really A5 in terms of top to bottom. And so it's a little bit thinner or slimmer when it comes to half letter, but it is interchangeable. We didn't wanna to have to have two separate half sheets since they're both so similar. It would have been a lot to try to manage. So this is just a half sheet you can pop into half letter or A5 size. If you want a half sheet, this cannot be a dedicated planner unless you choose to, because we do offer it in our shop and every single um, type of insert. So you could technically do that and you can have it hole punched or disc punched since it is for half letter or A5. Remember, half letter is typically disc punched, A5 is typically hole punched. So you could have it either option. So that is all of the sizes that are offered. There are also just a couple of things that I wanted to discuss in between things. I don't wanna confuse you, there is so much stuff on the market and I wanted to keep this video as simple as possible and just talk you through the standard sizes from smallest to largest. But I did wanna mention Erin Condren. Now Erin Condren is her own thing. She's in her own world, okay? I'm not quite sure what her planner sizes are. You can always look that up if you have questions. But she has what's called petite notebooks. And so this is a planner in itself. She has different layouts within it. This is its own size. I'm not sure what size it is, but I can give you a quick comparison to what I think is closest to it within the sizes that I just showed you. And I'm thinking the closest thing is probably gonna be B6 or maybe A5, you guys. So this is A5 size and it is very similar to A5 size, as you can see. So Erin Condren has a ton of these and different varieties and the size is standard. So it looks like it's very similar to A5. It might be just a little bit off on the width. So keep in mind, petite notebooks. I'm not gonna talk about every single planner company out there that has their own sizes. I just wanted to talk to you about popular sizes. The Happy Planner was covered in all of the sizes I just mentioned to you. And then Erin Condren also has coil bound. We're gonna talk about binding coming up shortly, but I wanted to show you the sizes of these as well because Erin Condren is very popular and she's got her own thing going on and I wanted to give you a little comparison of what her sizes are as well. So I'm thinking that that is more on the classic size level. As you can see, it is pretty much the same as classic, it's just a little more short. So 
I wanted to throw that in there as well because that is very popular. Erin Condren is, is super popular. So we've talked about all of the sizes. So I'm just gonna quickly go through really quickly and just place the planner on the table just so you can see. So first up out of the planners that I do have, I'm not gonna show you the ones I don't have because I want you to just see physically really quickly. Micro, personal size, mini size, athletic size, a five size, skinny classic size, classic size, and letter size. All right, I really hope that that helps you guys to be able to get the sense of what, what you want to choose. I know that there's a lot out there and you can get a little bit overwhelmed, but this video I'm hoping is, is helping you so far. And I still have a couple of things to touch on. I'm just gonna do a quick slide through to show you guys. And so we're gonna talk about some more things that can help you. All right, I just, I thought it would be cool to just to do a little slide by <laughs> so you can see the sizes. All right, so that is all about sizes. I know it seems like a lot, but I think I have given you enough information to be able to see what size is gonna work for you based on how you're gonna use it. With Ringbound Planners, there isn't as many color customizations. I mean, you're pretty much buying it as is. So I can't take these rings out of here and change it into different rings. This is what it is. You're buying this and you can't change anything out of it. This is the way it is. So there's not as much customization ability in terms of the way that the planner looks itself. You can't build a planner. Uh, well, you can build a planner with A5, but you can't change every single thing about that planner and build it from the ground up like you can with the disc punch system. So this is one system, which is the ring bound system. It is a very popular system. There are tons of planner covers available for the ring system, either in personal size a5 and everything in between you can add all the inserts that you want to add you can buy a planner that's already ready to go and stick it in here it's completely up to you and there are also planners on the market that you get all of this when you buy the planner i mean it's, it may not look like this but you can buy the whole entire system as it is so there are advantages and disadvantages of ring bound planners but again they are so very popular people love them they swear by ring bound systems and so it's just a matter of personal preference and they do make it easy to customize and change out your planner inserts which is great you just literally pop open the rings pull out the inserts and put in the inserts you would like you can also hack them like I do and I cut them so that way it makes it easy for me to put the inserts in and out of it I don't have to open the rings I can literally just do that and there's also a ton of accessories on the market for this as well. And it's pretty much interchangeable with the disc bound system as well. And so I think that, you know, it's just, again, in the end, a matter of personal preference, but there are tons of options available for A5, for personal size, and for all of the other sizes that I talked to you that are typically ring punched. So that is one type of system or binding system, and that is ring binding. The next type of binding, which I'm just going to touch on briefly, is the next type of binding that I'm just going to touch on briefly, and I'm not really sure the exact name of it, but it is basically where there's a glue or staple here on the spine, and that is how you purchase the planner. So as you can see with the petite planners, they're already stapled, and I know there's a term for it, so if you guys know the term for that, let me know. And it's, it is what it is. So you can't customize this, you can't add to it. There's nothing that you can do literally, but just use it as it is. It's just like a notebook. And so this one has a staple down the center or down somewhere in here, and then it's folded over. There's also some that have an adhesive. It's more like a, a book, book binding. Maybe that's what it's called. And so this is very popular typically for notebooks. Um, I know there are a lot of you out there who do use planners that are bound like this. The great thing about this system is that since it is the Erin Condren Petite Journal system, she does have covers for it like this. So you can easily just take the Petite Planner and stick it in to the cover 
And so that way you can have multiple uh, planners in here and you can have it customized the way that you want. So again, because this system doesn't allow you to pull the pages out, then you're very, you're pretty much stuck with it the way it is. But if you do want to have some more flexibility and customization to it, this option would be great for you because then you could just toss in a meal planner, toss in a goal planner, toss in your catch all planner and you can have everything all in one and it doesn't feel so limited. So just touching on that briefly, this is a popular system, but not as popular as the ring bound system or the disc bound system because of the customization part of it. And it also is limited in size. So that's next up again, not sure what the binding is called, maybe book binding and there's different ways that they bind it. This has a stitching and a staple in here, or it may just have the stitching. There's some that have a staple in the middle. So when you open it up here, that would be a staple here, a staple here. Here. and then there's some that just have glue along the binding so that is the next type of binding that I just wanted to touch on briefly because again it's not as popular as some of the other bindings so this is what I'm talking about when I when I talk about book binding and so there are planners that are built just like this so that's next up all right so next we're going to talk about coil binding this is very popular as well, and you typically see this in the Erin Condren world and also in some of the other Inkwell Press planners and other planners that we've seen on the market that have coil bound, and they are really getting good with giving us more options. So there are different color options that you can choose from. You can choose from metal or plastic. You can also interchange the covers now, so it do does give you a little more flexibility, but of course nothing's gonna be your ring bound planners or your disc bound planners because you can literally build a planner from scratch. So with this planner, you buy it like this, and then you use it like this. The pages cannot come out unless you hack it, which means you'll put slits in every page so that way you can pull it in and out. Erin um, Condren does also have lots of different accessories that you can use to put within the planner system so that way it can be a little bit more fun to use. So this planner, as an example, I've got some pockets here that I can put inside. I put a little, um, sticky strip here that Erin Condren has so that I could put this petite planner inside of here. I also have um, rulers and half pages that I was able to kind of hack to put inside of here. They have whiteboards here, they have sticky notes. So there are a lot of things that you can use or add to this planner to make it your own and customize it a little bit better. But in terms of the actual pages, you cannot pull them out unless again, you hack it. But some people don't want to do all of that. They already know that they're the type of person that wants to DIY a planner. So this would just never be an option for them. But there are some people who love this. They swear by it. And so they don't need to be able to add so much stuff to their planner. They just want to have a whole year from beginning to end, no Franken plan, none of that stuff. And that's how they use it. And and that is completely fine. This is definitely an option for those of you who are like that. You just wanna be able to use a one planner just like this from beginning to end. And also with Erin Condren, you can customize it as well. So the cover is customizable. You can add little things inside of it. It does flip easily in terms of the pages because it is stuck on a coil. So you won't run into a situation with the ring bound planners where they can come off track and make it difficult for you to turn the page. So these are great, just very easy to use as well. And because they have so many options, there's something out there for everyone. And again, we're gonna talk about layout. And so that way you could, cause that's a completely different part of the process in terms of choosing your planner. I didn't wanna lump that in with this video. That's something else that you wanna consider outside of the size and the binding and all of that stuff. So this is a great option for those of you who just want simplicity. You just want to buy a planner already done and you want to use it as is. So this is a notebook. This is a planner, but same concept, coil bound, lots of different options. As you can see, this is black. This is rose gold. She's also got silver and gold and very pretty options that go with the aesthetic that you're looking for. So that is next up on the list. All right, you guys, I saved the best for last because this is just the best binding system in my opinion, and that is your disc bound system. You just can't beat it. So companies that have disc bound systems are who we all know and love, the Happy Planner. They are one of the first to kind of pioneer that system. I first saw it in ARC and in Martha Stewart disc bound. Um, they were the first that kind of latched me onto the whole disc bound system. And then Happy Planner came out with their disc bound system and they had ton of more options. Martha Stewart and ARC are pretty much similar in terms of just the aesthetic is more simple. There's not a lot of options to choose from. So when Happy Planner came on the scene, we all went ham because of this disc bound system, which a 
lot of people didn't know about. If you didn't know about an ARC or a Martha Stewart, you probably thought Happy Planner developed that system, but they totally didn't. Um, they were a couple of others before then. But when Happy Planner came on the scene with all of the different options and things like that, it just blew our minds. So I love the disc bound system. The reason why I love the disc bound system is because it is completely customizable. So that means that you can literally take these little plastic discs, which come separately all by themselves and build the planner that you want. Now you can do that with ring planners. The only difference is that you can't change the ring. Otherwise, that system is pretty much customizable as well. But it's not easy to take the planner pages on and off like I showed you unless you hack them. And who wants to sit there and cut slits in every single page? Nobody. And so basically, you can say, so basically you can sit and think about what type of planner you want. Remember we talked about the purpose. Where is it gonna be used for? All of those things that we discussed early on in this video, you're gonna sit down and think about that and then that's gonna help you and to determine how you wanna build this thing out. And I do have a planner video on my channel that shows how to build a planner from scratch and it shows you like how to put the discs on and how to put the pages in, how to kind of build it the way you want it. I did that with uh, the fitness planner that I had. This is a little bit different in that the section are different and it's just used for a different purpose but it's pretty much the same concept so you'll sit and you'll think about all of the sections if you want to section it out most people do because you're building it there's really no reason to stick a whole year of a planner in here and just leave it at that you, you may as well just leave it like this because there's really no reason for you to take it all out of this to put it into a system like this if you're not going to add other things to it. You're just gonna keep the planner in here as is. You may as well just keep it in there. But if you wanna build a planner, because you, again, you can buy it like this from the Happy Planner. You can't buy half letter sizes. You can only buy certain sizes from the Happy so Planner. When you explore in the printable world, which we're gonna talk about briefly soon, it opens up a wide variety of other things that you just, we're so limited by using just the happy planner like this with so it opens your eyes to all of the availability of other things and you can really get this thing custom the way you want so you can buy a standard planner like this which happy planner has a ton of varieties of them so do other companies or you could start from scratch and build that thing up the way you want both are disc bound systems it's just a matter of what all you need to be able to track within that planner so as you can see we've got about 12 sections here because that's how my brain works. Again, we'll talk about Franken planning on a different video because that's basically what this is. And, and so you're able to literally take all the different elements that you know and love and combine them all into one planner system and move things around. That's why I love the disc bound system. I could take this off, I can move it around to a different section. If I don't want some inserts in or my planner's getting too bulky, which I do tend to do from time to time, I'll pull out this month and purge it on some other discs, which is great. You can buy more discs, other covers, and use those for a purge planner. There's so many different options when it comes to disc bound. So I could move this out, purge it away, and that way I have room for my next month. Um, so it just gives you more variety, in my opinion. And when it comes to rings, although I believe there are different sizes of rings that you can purchase to maybe make a smaller planner or a larger planner, with the disc bound system, there are different sizes of, of discs as well. So within our shop, we have a little bit different sizes than your traditional discs. So these are 1.50, which is right in the middle of classic size and expander discs. But there are so many different sizes of discs to make it easy for you to be able to customize that planner and be able to fit inside of the planner all of the things that you need to fit. And having those larger discs makes that possible. Of course, if you have the smaller discs, like these, you're not gonna be able to fit pretty much anything in there. And certain planners already come standard with certain discs. So your micro is gonna automatically have these small discs on it. Mini come with a certain size discs, classic, and so on and so forth. So I love the ability to be able to change the discs out. If I feel like I don't want this clear anymore and I want a different color, I can do that. There's metal discs. There's so many different options when it comes to the um, disc bound system, which is, I, I believe the disc bound system is the most customizable system on the market, hands down. And so, there are just so many options, which is why a lot of people love the disc bound system. Some people don't, and that's completely up to you, but there is something for everyone. So if you don't like disc bound, you can choose one of the other disc binding. You can choose one of the binding options that I mentioned earlier. But for a lot of us out there, disc is just the business. We love it. 
and it just gives us the versatility and the functionality that we need to be able to track our life and move things around as needed and purge as needed. It just gives us the most options. And so that's why I love and prefer the disc mount system the best. But as you can see, there were so many others that I mentioned that you can certainly have something that will work for you as well. So now we're gonna briefly talk about design because again, that is something that you'll wanna consider. If you're a neutral girl like me, you're just gonna want something very, very simple, okay? So Happy Planner and other companies, we also have a lot of covers with actual designs on them. So that would be something similar to this, which means it's a cover that has a printed design and then it's laminated. So that's an option for you. And this would kind of be an example of that. Well, it's a printed design and it's laminated. So that is probably the most popular type of cover. Whenever you buy a planner, it's probably going to have this sort of cover on it from happy planner to Erin condren to inkwell press um, all of those companies will allow you to be able to interchange the covers so like with this one this is Erin Condren. You can take that cover off and you can purchase a different cover to put on it. You can also customize the cover as you can see here. And so this is your traditional laminated cover that just has a simple design on the back of it. And then it's printed and it's laminated. So that is probably the most type of cover that you'll see on the market. And there are tons of variety. I mean, tons of varieties of designs that you can choose from. So you just have to go look on your popular shop on Etsy or through the Happy Planner at one of the local stores just find the, the right cover for you. Just, you know, literally flip through it because on the inside, it's gonna be different designs as well. So the cover is one thing, but the inside is something different. Again, we'll touch base on that when we get to the layout part of the next video. So covers are next. So I love a good design cover from time to time that's laminated, but I also love a good hard cover. So this is from Inkwell Press. And it's just a simple hard cover. Happy Planner does have these as well in different varieties. And I love these as well. So it gives you just a, a elegant and simple look. And it's very neutral. And then we also have our clear covers. So if you want just a clear cover, frosted cover, those are an option as well. And then we're going to do a whole dedicated video on these types of covers. I'm just briefly touching designs with you guys, but as you can see, you can choose from leather covers. And then when it comes to the binding option, that's why it's so important. Some things you just can't change. Like these, you just can't change the cover. It is what it is. So that is designs in a nutshell. There are so many different designs on the market. You just have to choose what is most appealing to you based on your own personal style. It's not something that you wanna be super concerned with. I mean, of course, if you're just a vibrant and bubbly person and you just wanna make sure that that fits your personality, go for it. But I really wouldn't use that as a main factor in determining whether or not to choose a planner, especially if you're trying to get serious about staying organized and being productive. If you find the right planner for you and it doesn't necessarily have the right style, Remember, you can change it. And then also you want to make sure that you are actually using the planner for it, what it's intended to be used for. And that's not for just looking pretty. All right, so let's briefly touch on digital. So there's a whole world of digital products. So these are not digitals, an example of non-digitals. It's something that's already set and ready to go for you. You can't change it. I mean, you can change it in terms of customization of it, but it is what it is. You buy it like this, you use it like this, you can certainly add things as needed, but for the most part, this is it, okay? And so this is already prepared for you, already printed for you for your convenience, but for those of us that want more customization, we wanna be able to really drill down to our requirements, our, our goals, our, you know, how to be productive and things that we need to do, and we just are not getting exactly what we need out of those planners, that is where digital printables come into play. They are more customizable, they're more specific to what you need, and you sometimes cannot find that in a planner. Like, if you want a goals planner, you know, there are standard goals planners out there, but sometimes you're like, you know what, I don't need this page, I only really want this page. Or, you know, there just may be something about it that you need that you're not getting, and that is where printables come into place. And so, printables are great. So let's say, for instance, you can't, you're not gonna really see a declutter challenge in a, a planner that's already assembled and sold at your local Michaels or hobby store. And so that's where you'd go onto Etsy and you'd do a search for what you want and then you'd be able to 
most likely find it, and then you will print it off at home. And so most of our shop does contain printables, not most of it, but a lot of it. And you'll be able to download. And once you download, you keep it forever and you can print it as many times as you want. And then you cut it down to size and you insert it inside of your planner. So printables are a great way to get out of your planner exactly what you want because there's so many options out there and you can DIY a planner at home. You don't have to wait for a company to ship you out some items. You'll already be able to print it as many times as you want and whatever size you want to print it in and add it to your planner to just make it that much more functional. So I definitely wanted to touch really briefly on printables. If you're a person that wants a planner and printables, you can certainly do that with certain types of planners, not these. These possibly, depends on how much time you're willing to put into it. The disc bound and ring bound system, you can print it out and you can stick it right on in that planner, just like the planner that you purchased to make it even more customizable. And so that's something that you'll want to decide. Do you want a hybrid planner of printables and printed? already ready to go for you planner or do you want to just print everything out and build the planner from scratch so that's completely up to you again it's a, a matter of personal preference but if you know that you're not getting something within a planner that you purchased from the store then you want to be sure to print it out if you can look online to see what's available to you there's tons tons and tons i mean uh, even outside of etsy of shops that offer printables so just print it out and stick it in your planner and you will certainly have that planner set up that you're looking for and that is definitely a part of the process of choosing the right planner for you. You wanna choose what type of planner you're gonna have, either hybrid with printables and printed and sent out to you, full planner already assembled and just stick those things in, or do you wanna just print everything from home and build the planner of your dreams? Okay, so I know we've covered a lot in this video, but I last wanted to briefly touch on cost. Okay, there is a cost to this thing that we're doing, okay? And it can get quite expensive. And so what I would recommend until you kind of get your bearing and your footing within the community, just go out and buy a little cheapy planner, work within that for a little while just to see kind of how things are going and, and how you're actually using it. Because sometimes you think how you're using it is going to be one way until you actually use it. And you're like, okay, that's not really what I'm trying to do. And so get a little cheapy planner because planners are expensive. They can get expensive until you get your footing. So now when it comes to the happy planner, the price point is typically can get up towards of 25, 30 to five dollars. So they are, I think at a pretty good range in terms of cost. And so they are a great budget friendly planner, but you can get into those planners that are super high end. There are companies out there who offer high end planners, which is fine. I tend to lean towards building my own planner and then buying a more high end cover. So this is an OT cover. She's got vegan leather covers, which are great because you, then you can have your planner stuffed inside of a nice pretty planner cover and that just makes it more aesthetically pleasing to you. Erin Condren's price point is all over the place but it can get a little bit expensive as well, up, upwards of $60, $65 for a planner. You guys, that's a lot of money. That's why I'm, I'm recommending to you to start off small with a little cheapy planner from Walmart, write in it, get your feet, get your bearings, kind of get the sense of what you're using it, how you're using it, play with some layouts, write some things in and really get a true idea as to how you're gonna use that planner before you go out and spend all of this money. So before you invest a lot of money in one, if you're not sure if it's the right one, choose that cheaper option. And if you like them and the size is right for you, then start shopping for something a little nicer and a little more you. And if you find out that it wasn't the right planner for you, at least you didn't spend a ton of money. And also another tip that I would suggest is to use an undated planner. That is probably the main reason why I use an undated planner because it does save some money, okay? I know it's a headache to have to go in and date everything. Like I just had to date my monthly. Then I have to date every single week, but there are some times where I forget to use my planner and I miss out on a whole week. And that is, there's a cost tied to that. So when you use an undated planner, it cuts that out entirely because you just pick up literally where you left off. And that's a great option, especially when you're just starting out on this new journey. And also consider the difference between buying a pre-made planner and a printable planner. It might be a factor worth your consideration because there is a cost difference in that as well. So a pre-made planner might be a little bit more expensive than getting printable downloads and printing them off at home. And so consider that when you are thinking about cost. And so cost can get up there, especially when you're thinking about accessories, pins, all of the stuff that the planner community offers, folders, inserts, 
extra inserts, paper clips. I mean, this thing can get expensive. Trust me, I have seen it because I have a shop and sometimes it amazes me how much people spend on planner supplies. But we love the planner community. We love being able to track all of our tasks, stay on task and get everything done that we need to get done. And so if you are new to the planner community, stick with it. Don't get overwhelmed. Early on, you probably will be like, what did I get myself into? But stick with it. I guarantee you that you will see the benefits of it. And so I think we've covered everything that we need to cover in terms of how to choose the right planner for you. We all have a planner personality. There are certain planners that work best for some people over others. And I've given you a few things preliminary that you can think about when picking up that planner off the shelf and deciding whether or not to buy it or download it. And so just keep in mind and don't forget that this planner is right for you at this moment in time. So as you change and evolve, your planning style needs to adapt and change too. So you can be pretty sure you'll use more than one type of planner throughout your life, as least I have. You guys have seen that on this channel. You've seen me use all different sizes, all different types, all different colors. You know that when the season change or when I change, my planner is gonna change. So that among other things is the beauty of planners and planning. So now that you know how to choose the perfect planner for you, stay tuned for the next video in the series, which is gonna take you through the next step in this process. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I didn't take up too much of your time. I knew this was gonna be a little bit more of a lengthy video just because of what we had to cover today. So, all right guys, that is it for this video. I really, really hope it helped you. I hope that you are excited about this new series on my YouTube channel. Again, it's called Planner University, and you will know through the title if it is a part of the series. And I also have a little special intro, which you saw in the beginning of this video, that I will be placing throughout this whole entire series. So let me know below, has this helped you? Do you think you have a little bit more clarity in terms of how to choose the right planner for you? I would love to hear from you. So thank you so much for stopping by to catch this first video in the series. I hope you enjoyed it so much so that you'll give me a thumbs up on this video. You will consider subscribing to my channel and you'll come back and you'll catch the next video in the series or any other video on my channel, in which case I'll see you then.